Hey. <laughs> okay. Hey, my name is Stephanie. Um, Steph Traversa. I actually went to school for costume design and then got to throw the rules out the window and it's a lot of fun. Um, in the daytime, I am a maker for a different company. And in my spare time, I put together all kinds of fun, um, whimsical creations. I also do the Sea Raven, which is leather masks and, and accessories and fun stuff that you can use to trick out your garb. That's me. Oh no! We're just being difficult. Um, I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Okay. All right, so if you can hear me, Marissa is experiencing technical difficulties. And we do have somebody on tech who is trying to fix that. So if you can hear me, please go wherever you are and light a candle for Betsy, who is sitting there with her <laughs> fingers on the keys, making this happen. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. We're good? I'm getting a thumbs up. Problem solved, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. See, somebody just went and lit a candle. Everything's fine now. Okay, um, I'm going to give a shout out to Samuel Serrett, who is doing um, a lot of our tech work, because we would not have had sound if it weren't for him just now messaging me and saying, hey, this is what you need to fix. We also wouldn't have had me, because I wouldn't be allowed in your house. So, shout out to Sam. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> um, so, okay. Hi, welcome. We're going to just jump right in now. Um, so, I want to start by, um, oh, I got sidetracked. I do have somebody sitting next to me on the computer here. So if you have questions, um, if you want us to go more in depth about something that we've just talked about, feel free to type it in the chat. She'll relay the message to me and we can stop and, uh, you know, go further into whatever it is you want to know. We understand what it's like to have a lot of opinions. We have, we have a lot of opinions. <laughs> so share. share um, so we're going to start by talking about um, how to put together a steampunk look from what is already in your closet. So... This doesn't require investing any money. It's a good place to start if you've never been to a steampunk event before um, or you've never dressed up for a steampunk event before and you just kind of want to get into the spirit of things, right? So this is my from your closet mannequin. Everything on this dress form came out of my closet. It's clothes that I wear in my regular life. Um, the number one piece, the number one thing you want to pull out of your closet is a maxi skirt or a maxi dress. And then you're going to pin it up like a bustle. So this, you'll see, you probably can't see too far away. I'll tell you, it's <laughs> pinned up. So you literally just take the edges of your skirt, lift them up, and safety pin them right to the top. Throw a belt over it, and boom, you've got instant waist down steampunk. And even easier, skip a step, tuck it into your belt. This is tucked in. <laughs> No pins. It just depends on the belt and how it fits you, but like it does. you can easily just like hitch up and go. Hitch up and go. That's our new motto. Hitch up and go. <laughs> I told someone once who was trying on bloomers in your tent, I was like, stop talking, unhitch your banana and follow me. And she was like, what? She had her cup with her banana in it. And I was like, no time. <laughs> There's no time for that. Um, so the next great piece is just a plain old button up shirt. Like literally just button down shirt. What I've done with this one to give it kind of like a, a nice period look is I popped the collar and I took just a scarf that I like that's um, on the thinner side and I tied it up into a pretty bow. What I recommend is if you go, um, 
onto like YouTube or Pinterest and just type in ways to tie a scarf, there are like thousands of videos out there with fun, interesting ways to tie scarves. Um, and that's, that's what one of these um, knots is. It's super quick and easy. Um, and then I threw some jewelry on. I happen to have this pretty lace vest that I thought was like a nice overpiece. Anything that's lace that you have, we're gonna we're gonna close up on the hitch up and go. <laughs> Do you like that? <laughs> that's my new hashtag. I'm really excited about it. So I'll unpin it so you can see. Can I interject while you're go unpinning? Um, yeah, adding lace. Lace is always your go-to for this kind of thing. So a friend of me, a friend of mine called me a while ago and was like, I have to decorate this thing, steampunk. Like, where do I start? And I was like, take something very industrial looking, um, very, e even if it's like grungy and just add like frilly things on top of it. Add stuff with ruffles, add stuff with lace. Um, and you're good to go. Yeah, steampunk is really great about that juxtaposition between hard and soft. So, so the more texture, the better. Like, who was it like Coco Chanel who was like, when you think you're done, take one thing off? No, no, no. When you think you're done, put two more things on. Right. See, and now you're the opposite done. of that. Um, so here we have the skirt that this is a maxi skirt. So you just want to grab the fabric, like just above your knee, maybe mid calf length, take it up to the waistband, and just safety pin it in place. And that creates this kind of like bustly effect. It is because mm -hmm. this is such a patterned skirt, but. Yeah. Very swag. You can also take a maxi um, and put another one on top. Like you can double layer and hitch up the top layer. Um, Again, put two more things on. Hang on one second. I'm just going to look at a comment. Uh oh. Um, Peacock's Nest. Lauren, what was it that you wanted to see up close? Type it in. We'll come back to it. Um, and the, the last thing that I'm going to say with pulling things from your own closet um, is find a hat. Find a hat. Steampunk is all about hats. All about um, hats. This is just like a nice corduroy. Oh, the scarf. That's what you wanted to see. We can do that. So it looks like a bow basically. But you can't, with scarves like that, you kind of can't just tie a bow. Um, they're kind of thick. So it is a special type of knot that I watched a YouTube video. <laughs> you know, that'd be super cute with too, if you had any kind of pin. Yes. Yes. Pin it right in the middle. Right in the middle, right there. Security and fashion. And <laughs> security welcome. and fashion. Um, so, so those are some initial tips and tricks for starting out um, with putting something together from what's already in your wardrobe. Um, so yes, staff. Can I piggyback off that? Yes. Great. So, um, that's, that's a great thing for your like everyday wardrobe. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of people who do other kinds of fancy dress that already have a whole closet of not regular day-to-day -day clothing, like a whole closet of Ren Faire or a whole closet of cosplay or whatever you have. Um, and it is, easy to do these things to that as well um i have a i own a number of pieces from from one thing maresca <laughs> because i go to king Richard's very rare um and also going to these things if you don't have a lot of accessories that's fine because when you get there you're gonna buy five and you're gonna be good to go um but i have a, this mannequin is tricked out in a lot of kind of like fairy wear like this is something i would wear to fairy fest this i got that fairy fest um but as a go-to thing for that, the same deal with adding accessories. I added this necklace, which is two bracelets hooked together with a big giant thing hanging off of it. Steampunk is all about innovation. <laughs> all about it. Yeah. If you like, remember when we were kids and we used to make paperclip necklaces and stuff? That we were training for this moment. That's the spirit of um, punk. Right? This is just an extra piece of lace that I had in my sewing box. I'm going to drape this around. Call it a 
call that a day. I'm going to take, this was so smooth and easy in my brain. I also have this vest that is all kinds of steady and really cool. Very dress up looking and I did not get it at a dress up event. I got it at like Purple Cow in Wakefield or something. <laughs> and I was like, this is going in my costume closet. Um, but it's easy to add things like that. Oh, also another thing. Um, so on hats, if you do have like, I think I own like six witch hats, but whatever, all in a day's work. I just put a I should have a regular pair of goggles. This is a mono goggle. Oh my but God, I'm wearing a mono goggle too. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So I will normally on the hat that I wear, I have one of my masks usually to self promote and say, hello, would you like me to make one of these for you? Right. Um, but throw a goggle on a witch hat and you're good to go. Boom. Steampunk witch. So other, other genres of fancy dress and, and a fancy leather belt as well. Um, but adding the same accessories because steampunk is so like, it takes into account adventuring and time travel and all these different things. So costume pieces from not only all these different cultures, but all these different like fantasy genres fit into that perfectly and, and even kind of built upon it really nicely. Um, so it's, it's that simple. Awesome. So, so a couple of people have commented on the various, um, things that they have used to make steampunk pieces, which we're actually going to, in a little bit, we're going to talk about um, crafting your own pieces and things to use. So, so I'm going to mention the things that everybody just talked about. Um, first, we're going to talk about what to look for in thrift stores, because thrift mm. stores are your best friend when it comes to steampunk costuming. Honestly, like what I'm wearing right now, for example, the, the corset, like the stuff around my waist, I, I bought you know, with the intention of it being steampunk, but everything else I'm wearing came from the thrift store. So thrifters are your best friend. So we're gonna, we're gonna bring this little lady forward. Um, and so some things to look for, blouses. Now here's a funny, not even a funny thing. Um, look, just because you identify female, don't necessarily limit yourself to the female section. Just because you identify male, don't let necessarily limit yourself to the male section. Go back and forth between them because you just never know what you're going to find. And as a matter of fact, usually when I'm doing steampunk menswear, the pants that I put them in are pants that are intended to be women's wear. Like, there, there are no barriers or boundaries or rules when it comes to this. <laughs> It's whatever you want. <laughs> yep. Um, but so so a good thing to look for at thrift stores are um, blouses and shirts. Uh, plain button down, like a plain white button down is great. You can pop the collar, put a scarf around it like I did with this black shirt here. Um, but if you can find a blouse that already has a high collar or a little bit of ruffle at the um, wrist, those are really, really fantastic things to look for. Things that have like lace details. Um, I'm going to pull this out from back here. This is a nightgown, but Love it. From the waist up is actually a really, really great steampunky looking um, blouse. Nice. And then I'm also just going to talk about the vest. The vest is great um, if you want to do it with skirts, pants, bloomers. Um, sleeveless long sleeve like the skirt is a really versatile piece it's a great corset alternative um it looks good on its own it looks good under jackets and vests are so so easy to find at the thrift store they're really easy especially and like the louder and more colorful the better because the better chance you have of it matching whatever you have at home right um and more on the call the corset alternative stuff because not everybody can or can comfortably wear one um, I've seen a lot of posting of like, so what do I do? The vest is a great way to go. Put a belt over the vest. Um, or even if you find a super ruffly shirt, you can find really easily a lot of like fashion belts with this elastic -y waist. Yeah. So that'll cinch in everything. So feel free to like, especially if you are a lady, you can get a menswear, um, a men's vest. And if it's a little too big, put a belt on it. Listen, <laughs> That's put a bird on it, put a belt on it, put a gear on it. Put a belt on it. Put a belt on it. 
because that's that's actually the next thing that I was going to suggest when you're going into thrift stores. Yes. I head for the belt. I mean, even if I'm just going to the thrift store, like, because I'm going to the thrift, thrift store, I head to the belt section every time because you find really cool things. Really cool things. And it's easy to, like, take a corset, put a belt over it, put three belts over it. Like, this super cool, very steampunky looking belt was $3 at Savers. I'm so proud of you. Right? So, so that's the- I'm going to zoom in on you so I can see it. Well, sorry, I've already put it down. Oh, no. This too. This was another like really cool steampunk belt that I found at a thrift store. Um, but so here's the thing about putting together a steampunk look via thrift. You have to be patient and you have to be a little relentless. Like you can't just say, all right, I'm going to go to the thrift store today and come out with a steampunk outfit. You could probably come up with something, but if you really want to um, create a look, then you kind of have to go like, you know, frequently. I don't want to say how frequently because everybody is different. Frequency means different things to different people. But, um, you know, it, it's not like a, a one-stop shop kind of experience when you're thrifting for um, it, costume pieces. Basically, you're becoming a collector. You're adding to your collection. If you were an antiques collector, if you were like, you know, if you collected spoons or thimbles or anything like that, you would obviously just like add bits and pieces as you go. So think of it that way. Um, you're never going to be able to walk into Savers and be like, look, Look at my array. <laughs> um, except at Halloween. Oh, true. Because that's when they like deliberately save all of the kind of like steampunky things and put them in the steampunk section. Um, so, so actually, that also brings me to the um, the kind of like uh, mass produced steampunk stuff that you can get nowadays. Which, uh, you know, if that's the direction you want to go, then absolutely there are places like. Um, uh, Spirit Halloween and Savers actually has a huge Halloween section. You can get stuff on Amazon. Um, and absolutely, like, you know, st anything goes in steampunk. That's, I, I genuinely believe, like, you wear what you mm -hmm. wear. I prefer to, to make things and to craft things. And not even to say that you have to be a maker to do it, but, but the, the spirit of steampunk is about um, creation and innovation. So, you know, if you can pull together a bunch of different things to build an outfit that way, I just think that is, that's really keeping the spirit of steampunk alive in your costume. <laughs> it really is. I mean, the, the pre-made costume pieces are a great place to start, especially if you're somebody who was never crafted before. If you don't really feel confident in investing a lot of money into costume pieces that you're not going to wear as part of your everyday wardrobe. Um, the pre-made stuff is really great to start with and then add to and build upon. And if you spend, you know, $5 on a pair of gloves, you're not going to feel bad about cutting them up, sewing stuff onto it, hot gluing stuff onto it. Like it's a good way to, um, it's a good safety net to kind of expand into like toe in the water, if you will, all of that other stuff. Yes. Um. So, so in the, in the nature of thrifting, let's also talk about um, some nice DIY costume hack type yes. things, which is always our favorite. Um, so the first and easiest and best, and it's the one that all, people always go to, is um, curtain uh, skirt out of curtains. Perfect. Skirt out of curtains. It's really easy. There there are a number of YouTube videos that you can you can go to. Um, so I'm not going to like belabor it too much, but you literally take two curtains, sew down the sides. And then depending on how fancy you want to get, um, mm -hmm. you can either sew a bustle into it or just do the hitch and pin trick um, and then just stitch an elastic into the waist. It's so, so easy. And it's nice and cheap. Um, because mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes it comes with all kinds of great things on it where like you don't have to spend money on trim. You can just find a curtain that has a ruffle on the bottom and, and strategically cut it and use that as your focal point. Yeah. Um, because basically skirts like this that you would wear for this kind of thing is a giant, a giant tube, giant wide fat tube that then gets gathered in the top. Um, just to Curtains go to pre-made costume stuff really quickly, somebody commented and it's what Jeff was saying, it's a like the pre-made stuff is a great base and then you take that and add on to it. Um, yeah. And the same person, hi Melissa. Um, also, in the crafting and DIY vein spirit of things, suggested using Christmas tree skirts. 
Yes. Because you know what? I walk into the store every year at Christmas time and go, look at that nice little row of capes. capes. Right. Right. right there. Because they already, it's a circle skirt, which means it's got like a lot of, of volume. Mm-hmm. And it's got a tie. Like you just tie it on. It's perfect. It's already ready to go. It's perfect. It's a peplum. It's a skirt. It's a cape. Right. It's everything. It's everything. Um, the other costume hack that I want to talk about, which is a little bit more involved, and you definitely need to be an experienced sewer to do this one, is the um, suit into cutaway jacket, which oh, I geez. learned from Steph. So maybe she <laughs> wants to talk about that one. <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, I, I was very lucky. So I did study costume design. Like I went to school and was like, I'm going to be a theater manager. And then I went to the costume shop and was like, oh, this is where I belong. And the costume shop manager was a woman who spent her whole life doing stuff like, um, she was in the SEA. She, like her and her husband had worked at rent fairs before. So she came from that kind of background where historical sewing was not only um, necessary, but like she was meticulous about it. Um, And it was, that was one of her tricks is that you would buy, find a suit. um, And the, the trick with that is to find a jacket that already fits you. And if you need to like slightly take in the the bottom or like take it in somewhere that's easy to do, but you want to get the matching pair of pants to go with it. And depending on how big those pants are, maybe you have a lot of material, maybe not. Um, But basically you can cut off, like put on the jacket, mark where that waist is, cut it off there. Um, Leave yourself a little room for sewing. I've gained weight since I did this, so it doesn't fit. But But then, but yeah, you would. This seam here is what she's talking about. There we go. Thank you for the visual. You would then cut up the pants, basically just like cutting the seams or seam ripping them if you're that kind of weirdo who has a ton of time um, so that they're flat pieces of fabric again. And you can cut um, those pieces into like, you know, something that has a flat line that you can attach to that waist. I've done this like quick and dirty for theater before. I've done it like super meticulously as a wedding garment one time. That was a, I cried three times, but that woman was beautiful. She had a suit and it was, it had a beautiful peplum skirt. Um, If you don't have a whole lot of material in the pants, you can cut short pieces and make a nice little peplum. Um, But it's, it's great for guys who want like a morning coat or a cutaway. Um, or something with a skirt just to add a silhouette. It gives you something to work with other than just wherever that jacket naturally fell as it was. Yeah, because menswear can be challenging. Um, Hmm. On the one hand, it's very easy. And on the other hand, it can be kind of challenging. On the one hand, you know, menswear can be slim fit pants, a button down shirt, and a pair of suspenders. And like, put on a steampunk but if you want to elevate it to the next level Mm -hmm. it can get get tricky because things like frock coats and cutaway jackets and those more period garments that's not something that you can go to the thrift store and just find Um, if you are a sewer i would recommend for that kind of thing even just to look at finding like a folk art pattern or some kind of like historical pattern as opposed to a costume pattern that will give you a better idea of what that cut should look like um so that you can like take that and kind of it's a better base for you to build on top of and do stuff like that and then you can apply the same rules of like either using the buttons that came with the jacket or adding like a fancy closure um a fancy hook and stuff like that right I I I did that with all the vests that I you know any steampunk vest I use I always replace all the buttons with like fun and interesting things yeah um Okay, so those are some of our favorite uh, DIY kind of tricks. I don't know, Steph, do you have any other DIYs that you want to talk about? I mean, there's things that you can do that don't involve a lot of sewing that are super easy. You can um, sew tons of buttons onto stuff. Buttons are great, especially if they're um, an eclectic mix, like all silver buttons, but different shapes and sizes, all different colors. Um, You can glue gears onto stuff. You can do a lot of things that are also just like adding on, add a piece of lace on the cuff and that will kind of, you know, jazz it up. There's a lot of things you can do that aren't major construction in the crafting world. Um, Again, take that like prefab steampunk costume that you bought, that jacket that was $10 on Amazon and don't be afraid to hot glue 
whatever you want on top of it. The blue gun is your friend. Um, somebody in the comments just mentioned, and this is a really fantastic tip if you're looking for menswear, a lot of times tuxedo rental companies will sell off their older inventory, and that's a fantastic place to get mm -hmm. like tail coats and cutaways and morning coats and things like that. Um, that's So that's a great tip. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. And in the costume shop at URI, we used to get donated to us like boxes and boxes of like bridesmaids dresses and, and stuff like that from stores that were just getting rid of old dead stock. Right. I, there's a popular trend, I think, um, among steampunk, I don't know, I see photos online all the time, of taking, like, the 80s prom dress that has, like, the huge puppy suit, oh, yeah. and, like, bustling it up and putting a corset over it, and, like, there you go. It's perfect. I know, I ran into somebody at the last uh, Compass Rose, I was like, I love your bustle, and she was like, thanks, it was an old prom dress. Right, right. <laughs> Just cut it up. Right, don't be afraid to cut it up. Don't be afraid. Cut it's it sitting up. in your closet. It should see sunlight. And make you feel fancy. All right. Now, mm -hmm. let's talk about corsets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we're going to, we're basically going to go, like, start at the bottom and work our way up in terms of cost slash quality. Good idea. So, I used to vehemently believe that you don't want to go on Amazon or any of those places and buy a $20 corset. I still mostly believe that. However, I bought this on Amazon for like $20 because I had a costume I needed to throw together. I was doing a cosplay. I needed something that looked like this like really quickly and really cheaply. And mm -hmm. it did. It's got plastic boning, like it really didn't hold me in the way a good corset would, but it created the look that I needed perfectly. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for like, you know, I just need a, a quick look to, to pull this together, or if you don't necessarily want to invest the money in a good corset, okay, go on Amazon and buy that $25 corset. Especially if it's a look that you don't know that you're going to really continue with. Exactly. This was a one-time thing. I will say it was very uncomfortable to wear. So just keep that in mind. Cheaper corsets usually equal greater discomfort. They usually do. I have my, this is my, this is probably got the most use of anything that I own fancy dress wise. This is a $10 corset from Amazon. It is an underbust. It's lace. I just needed something to like go on top of a costume one time. I needed an extra layer. Um, Plastic boning, not very supportive, but uh, it has held up. Like, I can throw this in the washing machine wow. when I have all of my... I'm also a ghost tour guide, <laughs> my, one of my, like, 17 jobs. And I wear all black, and it's very, you know, Victorian and witchy and all the things. And I can throw this over anything, like a bulky vest or a blouse or a, like, empire dress and immediately have something of a different silhouette. It's not going to hold me in. This is not going to take inches off my waist, but it is going to give me a nice looking waist. Um, and I can throw it in the washing machine. Who doesn't want that? Um, so, so actually let's really quickly talk about the difference between an underbust and an overbust. Um, oh yeah. Cause I realize not everybody necessarily knows that. So I'm actually going to take this off so that you can see what I have on, which is, um, this is, this is an underbust corset. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It is a corset that sits under your bust. Um, so this, I particularly like the underbust corset because I have a large chest. I have a chest that is disproportionately large to my waist, which means that um, if I put on a corset that fits comfortably in the waist, chances are <laughs> I can't breathe because... <laughs> That's the thing too, is like, it adds that extra layer of comfort, even if it's, even if you don't have that kind of silhouette, if you want more mobility, yeah. um, if you want, if you need to be able to breathe a little bit better, think about an underbus or a waist bus. cincher. Sometimes they're called. Right. So waist cinchers style. usually are a little bit, actually, this might even be considered a waist cincher. It, it, it stops here as opposed to like down here, which is really yes. where it would stop. Um, but I specifically chose an underbust for this because I knew I needed to be you know, talking and up and moving around and like, I might need to bend over or like kneel down. There's no bend exactly. over Right before this started, I dropped something and I was like, thank God it's an underbust. Right, right. Um, and then an overbust obviously is something that comes up over the bust. Um, those are, those are typically the ones that, you know, you see, you know, they give you, they give you a lot of volume and a lot of push. 
Um, so, so that's the difference under bus versus over bust. Mm -hmm. Let's talk, let me show you an over bust corset. So this, this is what I like to think of as the next level up from the like $25 Amazon corset. Um, is something like this. It's still mass produced. You know, this isn't a, a handmade corset, um, but it's much better quality, much, much better quality. It's got steel bones in it um, as opposed to the plastic bones. So, and when we talk about boning, I'm just going to bring this up close to the camera. Do you see these kind of like lines in the corset, these channels? That's where the boning goes in. So it's literally a piece of um, spiral, usually steel running through here. Um, original corsets were made from whale bone, but obviously that's mm -hmm. thing anymore. Sometimes a stomacher that was just a flat piece of wood, <laughs> so depending on the silhouette and history, you know. <laughs> um, so, so, so those are those are kind of the marks of a, of a more well-made corset is when you have the steel boning, which is just a little bit more substantial. Um, this corset is very heavy, so that's something else to keep in mind. Um, Great question. Why do corsets go with steampunk? Oh. I love it. So so here's a funny thing, actually. Let's talk about that. In Victorian times, corsets were underwear. <laughs> so I'm not sure at what point it became outerwear for the for the steampunk. I feel like in my mind it's always been about the deconstruction aspect of it. Like you like things that are stripped away and very industrial looking are um, kind of more of that creative adventurous kind of spirit and artistic kind of, you can get a little more artistic with a costume piece that you're putting on top of instead of like having to invest in something that is never going to get seen. Yes. Right. That's how I've thought about it. And because honestly, you know, especially when you're talking about the, the higher end, better quality corsets, yeah. the amount of work that goes into these things is crazy. Like it's insane. When you spend hundreds of dollars and like 70 hours making a garment, you want to see that. Right. So for that to be sitting Thank underneath you your clothing that no one's ever going to see. Sad. That's Waste. sad. Right. That's sad. So let's bring Maybe. it to the outside. Let's wear them on the outside. And so obviously something like this is meant to go on the outside. You're not wearing this. My actual outside. hashtag is wear yourself on the outside. Yeah, right. The wear yourself on the outside. Um, and to go off of that kind of in the opposite direction though, whereas the steel boning is so great and actually really supportive if you have like back problems. Um, I have, if you are a sewer and you want to start branching into things, this was a corset pattern that I put together without any boning whatsoever. It has a zipper up the back and it's really just something that, um, kind of gives you the silhouette again, without taking inches off your waist. It's a lot more comfortable, but it is very pretty fabric. So this was an investment more in like, I think this was like a silk remnant as opposed to, you know, the insides. Don't look at the insides, but. Um, so speaking of boning and corsets, the cardinal rule of corset wearing, boots before corset. Boots before corset. Everything before corset. Corset goes on last. Everything. Corset goes on. You think you're done. And then you're like, oh, I'm just going to put on this necklace. And you go to lift your arms and you're like. <sighs> What have I done? Don't do it. Um, so that last corset that I showed you, um, I bought online. Like I said, it was mass produced. Um, those corsets retail for around $150. Um, so I actually think that's a fantastic place to start. You can get them on sale. Uh, Corsetstory.com is, I think, probably where I bought this one. Um, and yeah. they do a lot of like, <laughs> back in like June, they were doing a buy one, get three free sale. So I got four. Oh, yeah. Of course, are friends. Um, I have the underbust version. Yeah. I right. think of the thing so, that you just showed. It's got the swing locks in the front. Brown. Oh, also, sorry to interrupt again. Again. But I just want to make note. Steampunk doesn't have to be brown. I have this beautiful, like, death metal monster truck goth princess friend who was like, I love steampunk, but I hate brown. It doesn't have to be. So many options. Don't be afraid of color. I know I'm in heavy so box right now, that. don't be afraid of color. Yeah, most of my stuff is like black and blue and green and purple. I think this might be the only brown garment I own. That, is, that course that I just showed you is the only brown one I have. Um, there we go. But so, it fits. But so, it but, so I think that like mid-range mass produced um, but still quality corset is a good place to start if you've never worn a corset before. Um, mm -hmm. But let's also talk about the higher end, really good quality corsets. And actually, I'm going to start with um, 
Pendragon costumes. Mad Girl Clothing is actually the name of their steampunk line. This is my most favorite costume piece that I have ever bought. It was really expensive. It was like $300, but it is the greatest costume piece I have ever owned. Also, I can attest to the fact that you've worn that like a dozen times at least. I wear it so ever. often. It goes to Fairy Fest. It goes to the Ren Fair. It goes to every it's steampunk done. thing. And what's great about a corset like this, I'm just going to actually open her up. Do it. In particular. Love a swing lock. Uh, right? Love a swing lock. It's so nice. Put a swing lock on anything, guys. Um, Not glue it onto your wristband. Just do it. So what's nice about this is, one, the modesty panel is sewn in. So the modesty panel is this piece that goes across the lacing. So if you don't have anything on underneath it or if you don't necessarily want, like, your underwear showing, the modesty yeah. panel is what um, covers you for, for where the lacing is. Also, if you lace it tight enough... <laughs> You don't, you don't need to look like a ham. Doesn't matter. Right. Fine. The it doesn't matter what size you are. Those strings dig in. So, so the modesty panel is sewn in on both sides on this one. Most of the time, corsets have a modesty panel that is only attached to one side and you just kind of like shift it across and you put it on and it never works out the way you want it to. Especially when you're putting it on yourself. Right. You really need assistance with that. Um, you need a buddy. But also this one is handmade. Like this was made by... Mm -hmm. Not that they weren't all made by people, but I bought this directly from the person that made it. Yeah. They're um, like small batch. Right. Very right. Quality. And, you know, she's been doing it for a really long time. She knows her stuff. It's comfortable. Like, it's comfortable. That's crazy talk when you're talking about something that literally is meant to constrict you, but it's comfortable. Well, yeah, because if it fits you properly, if it's the right size, it's actually very supportive. Unless you're trying to put a pair of boots on and then you've already broken the rules right. and it doesn't matter anymore. But... Um, um, well constructed, proper fit equates you could wear that thing all day and not feel the ill effects. Um, and so the other, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I have, let's save, this, I, let's save yours. This is my, this is my go-to over bus thing. We're going to save yours to the end. Cause yours is the ultimate, like, if you can make this happen, make this happen. If you can make this happen, make this happen. So like, I'm not going to lie. It's real easy to do this dress up stuff when you are in fact a master seamstress. Right. Um, so, but I had a very good opportunity a while ago to branch out into um, corset making like with, a, I don't want to say apprentice with somebody, but like took me through the steps. So this is like pretty on the back and the front. I had the opportunity to like, because I made this for myself, I got to make a mock-up and tailor it to my own body um, before putting it together so the bones are in the right place it's all the right measurements the right height the right proportion I got to like take it in in places and then let it out in places um, to give myself a certain silhouette because this was like an underwear pattern like this was like an actual Victorian I think it's Laughing Moon um, who makes those patterns and so I kind of just altered it a little bit so I would have more of the fashion silhouette as opposed to but like I could wear this for hours I could wear this for a day. Yeah, so, so I, I also have a corset that Steph made me, um, and it was the same thing. She did a mock-up. She fitted it to me. So it it fits. It's tailored to me. It fits my body the way that it's supposed to. Um, and, it, right, I, aside from this, you know, the, the beautiful Pendragon costume one, it is probably the corset that I wear the most. Um and, and, you know, because she made it for me, I got to pick out the fabric and I got to pick out, like, the trim and things like that. So I specifically chose something that's kind of cross-genre. Um, so I wear it to the Renaissance Fair. I wear it to the Fairy Festival. I wear it for steampunk. Like, I wear it for a lot of things. I will say it is a really, really pretty, like, cream and foresty green, yeah. like, batik. Which, where do you find a batik corset anywhere ever? Right. And it, oh. it's so oh, no. comfortable. Like, I could probably lace my boots up while I was wearing it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's really good. So if, yeah. if you have the option, if you have the option to have a, a, a corset made for you, um, mm -hmm. I don't even know, honestly, like, if I didn't know stuff, I wouldn't know where to go to have a, a corset made for me. Um, it's real hard. I mean, I would I would look around on, like, places like Instagram and Etsy and, and stuff like that. However, it is hard to find somebody who's, like, local to you. Right. Also, if you are a sewer who wants to, like, start doing that, I want to emphasize again, make a mock-up. Even if it's just, like, your friend knows how to sew and you beg her to try to make one for you, um, have them make you a mock-up 
just it's worth it. Just spend the extra ten dollars to get like some plain cotton that you can try it on with. Don't invest the time um, and money into buying all the materials that a course yeah. requires before you've done a mock-up. Um, it seems like a lot of extra work and time and money and stuff like that, but it, it's going to save you in the long run. It's it's a very like stitch in time saves nine concept. Um, and I've been there. We're running out of time. So I really quickly just want to tell you about um, damsel in this dress corsets because they are having a sale that starts next Friday. Um, so this is a damsel corset. They're really, really fantastic. Um, again, so, so what's nice about the damsel corset is the, the owner, Michelle, um, is a large busted woman. So she developed, like she created the pattern with a large bust in mind. So uh, particularly if you have a larger bust, I highly recommend the damsel corset. Um, this one normally retails for about $200. I think I paid $125 and I got another piece with it because I bought it at her once a year um, mystery bag sale, which is next Friday. Uh, if you want to do it, I highly, highly recommend it. She has varying levels of mystery bags. So you can say, I want to spend a hundred dollars and you'll get the hundred dollar bag. Or I want to spend $300 yeah. and you'll get the $300 bag, which has like a complete outfit in it. Um, but it's a great way to get a really good deal on a really, really like incredibly well-made corset. The only catch is that you don't get to pick the fabric. But she does have usually a really interesting selection of fabrics. Like I've never seen boring fabric. Right, from right. Um, okay. But so we've got like uh, a couple minutes left. So if anybody has any questions that they want to throw out, um, before we finish, I will just vamp a little bit cause we are on a little bit of a 20 second delay. So I'm just going to uh -oh. take time to get those questions in while, get them in there. you know, talk about, um, so I'll talk a little bit more about the damsel corsets since I'm, I'm sending everybody to her sale for next week. Um, she has overbust corsets. She does also have underbust corsets and then she does tons of accessories. Oh God. I forgot to talk about accessories. Oh my God. No, we've been talking about accessories all the time. Belts and jewelry and hats. Those are accessories, Marissa. Well, right. But the, the point that I wanted to make was <laughs> if, again, my personal opinion, if you only want to invest a little bit of money, you maybe only want to buy like one good piece. I say go to the accessories because you can go to the thrift store and you can find a skirt. You can find a blouse. Oh, yeah. The things like the hats and the belts. Nope, not the belts. The hats and the like pouches and things like this. Mm -hmm. um, I think those those should be your first purchases because things like that instantly make something steampunk. I also forget to talk about some very important things. First of all, um, because Whimsy and Fluff mainly makes bloomers. Oh, my God. I remember being at, and we don't have to name the name, but we were at a Ren Fair last year that was like the hottest weekend of the year. People were dropping like flies, getting carried away with heat stroke. Oh, God. And people kept coming into the tent to say, please, I just need to buy this pair of like cotton I blocked bloomers. It out. Like, I couldn't remember what you were talking about because I blocked it out. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I remember now. It's fine. You don't have to listen. But um, just get a nice pair of bloomers. And you can make them out of a pillowcase. You can make them out of sheets. Um just I think mostly what you have but uh yeah it's it's gonna be your friend even if you don't feel like wearing a skirt do that but have stuff that you can do in all kinds of weather like not only is it a good versatile costume piece if you just don't feel like wearing a skirt but like there will come a day when you have to go to a fair with your friends and they're dragging you to it and it is 98 degrees outside in the shade and you are gonna sweat through whatever you're wearing so make sure the things that you are wearing, like go for a belt instead of a corset, go for bloomers instead of a big heavy skirt or, or, you know, light silk or cotton or linen, um, stuff like that. So like, I always say it's more impressive to have a lot of thinner or a lot of like smaller layers, things you can build upon as opposed to one bulky thing. Um, like I love the, these skirts. This is, um, I think foxglove, that silk guy from fairy fest, but having buildable things, um, is going to see you through all kinds of weather and all kinds of events. Um, so we did have one question about where to find um, quality, inexpensive hats. And that's actually a really hard combination to find. Um, mm -hmm. I frequent thrift stores. And I know that it, it, they are not the kind of thing that you come across very often in thrift stores. Um, but if you are... Um, diligent and eagle-eyed, sometimes mm -hmm. you can find them. Mm -hmm. So that's always my go-to. Um, and then um, the other, what I like to do actually is I buy hats like this one, which is just, you know, like a kind of cheapo cardboard hat. Um, and then I, I zhuzh it up a little bit. Um, it's not the best quality, but, but you know what? Like 
<laughs> oh, we all love a good hat decoration. Put a mask on it, put a piece of ribbon on it, put a piece of lace or a scarf. Um, sometimes I, I tie a giant piece of tool and let it like kind of ruffle off the back. Yeah. You can really dress up a hat. Um, Super easy. But also I got this at, um, I think at Fairy Con one year, yeah. but a lot of times people will have like vendors who have other costume pieces and then we'll have like a couple of hats, um, like plain. Yes. They're good quality for cheap. Again, it's not every vendor, but you will have good luck at events if you are shopping. Um, if you are looking for a, a decent quality vendor, um, I recommend Hats in the Belfry. Their prices are not crazy, but their quality is is pretty good. Um, they're kind of like a, a nice a nice mid range. Um, particularly like with top hats, you can you can start to get like crazy expensive with them. Um, and Hats in the Belfry is a good, um, not super expensive uh, place to start. There was just one other thing I was going to say, and then I was going to say goodbye. I can plug if we're looking for places to go. Um, and I just ordered a bunch of stuff today. Mary Not Martha on Etsy. Mary Not Martha has like tons of lace trim and uh, appliques and stuff like that. So if you're looking for just, I think this came from her, just pieces to add on or tie to yourself. Hitch on your banana. Um, look for little like trims and things like that. But my go-to is Mary Not Martha. Yep, and then so we so we talked about um, Mad Girl Clothing, which is a division of Pendragon Costumes. Yes. Um, uh, damsel in this dress, which is damselcorsets.com, is her website. She also does menswear. Um, and then another go-to website that I like is um, Historical Emporium. They're a good place for like frock coats and things like that. And then mm -hmm. the other one that I like is museumreplicas.com, um, yes. which tends to actually be more <clears throat> Renaissance, but they also have a steampunk section. So. Oh. On the topic of hats, good cheap hats, the costumer, the yep. costumer.com. Yes. Anytime I need a hat for a production, I've gotten boaters, I've gotten fedoras, I've gotten bowlers. Like it's always good enough quality. Right. It's not, you know, it might not be museum quality, but it is like, I mean, a $6 boater was like everything I ever needed it to be. And I wasn't afraid to spray paint it and glue flowers onto it and all the other things and still have it be wearable and sturdy. So. There's that too. All right. We're out. We're done. Time's up. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us so much. Um, so you can always find me um, at whimsyandfluff.com. Steph is the Sea Raven on Instagram. Um, you can also just bother Marissa and she'll give me a Right. Just, just ask me and then I'll, you know, I'm also Whimsy and Fluff on Instagram and Facebook and all the places. Just look up Whimsy and Fluff. That's how you find me. Um, and then I can point you to Steph. So thanks for joining us. Um, this is super fun. Some fabulous steampunk costumes from all of you. And Bye. you can we just do this again next week too? Yay!